Here's some wisdom from Dave Viner. Thanks, Glenn. Ah, Tonewood. The debate about Tonewood is back. Um, the truth is, the debate about Tonewood never really went away. It's always been there. But it's kind of come back into the limelight a little bit with Paul Reed Smith's recent, um, I guess you could say, inflammatory remarks about Tonewood deniers or Tonewood truthers. Um, so I think it's just something that's worth having a little bit of a chat about, to be honest. So what do I really think about Tonewood? Um, you know, I used to strongly believe that Tonewood was um, a pretty big factor in an electric guitar's tone, and I still think it matters, but not to the extremes that people think it does. Um... I think, you know, a guitar is a sum of its parts and all of the things have a little bit of an effect on the sound. But ultimately, the wood that the guitar is made from, I don't think plays a huge effect on things. Um, I think the real problem with people hearing the differences in woods in electric guitars, because that's what we're talking about, actually comes from hearing the guitar acoustically. You know, when we play an electric guitar on our lap, we're not only hearing the sound that's coming out of the speaker, we're also hearing the way the body resonates. And some guitars, some electric guitars, do resonate and sound a bit better than others. My um, my my Fender, this is just a, a player series strap. So this is basically what the Mexican standard is now. Um, this is great. It's great. It sounds really loud when I play it. It's very, very resonant or full or whatever description you want to use. Um, so yeah, I, I think it sounds great. It sounds great when I plug into an amp. It sounds great if I'm playing it on the sofa. It sounds really, really cool. On the other hand, a guitar like this Iceman, um, this guitar, you know, it looks really fucking cool because it's an Iceman and Icemans look cool. Um, but acoustically, <clears throat> but acoustically, it doesn't sound very good. It sounds quite dead, um, if that's the best description for it. It doesn't sound as loud. It doesn't sound as full-bodied as my as my Fender or even like you know even even this this Squire Bullet Strat um, sounds better acoustically than the Iceman does. And for a long time, I thought my Iceman didn't sound very good. So I, you know, changed the pickups in it, I changed the bridge, did all of these things. And then I just recorded it and realized it sounds fine. And that's, I think, is really where the issue with tone wood lies, is that some woods, is that some guitars sound better acoustically than others. And because we have that close to our body, we have that close to our ears, we hear that and then perceive that loudness of the guitar acoustically we, we perceive that as sounding better. We think it sounds better. But the reality is when you plug it into an amp, there's not much of a difference between them. Um, there are differences, but they're like this big. And once you're on stage playing and your mics, uh, your cabinet's mic'd up, and then that's coming through the PA, those differences are fucking negligible. Like no one's going to hear it. And I think, you know, Glenn Fricker, Jim Lill, Burl's Art... They've the videos that they have produced have definitely sort of helped diminish the the importance of tone wood in my opinion. Um, you know their videos are really good, and if you haven't checked them, just check them out. I'll put some links in the in the description. But you know the the videos are really informative. They're very transparent and they're genuine. You know, and I I'll I'll, I'll admit you know when I first saw Glenn Glenn's guitar. Glenn's guitar, Glenn's video about tone wood. He got two custom guitars made, all with the same hardware but different woods. I wanted to hear a difference in them, and I couldn't. You know, there was just whatever difference was there was so negligible, you couldn't hear it. And I remember watching Jim Lil's video when he did the. I think the video is just called "Where Does the Tone in an Electric Guitar Come From?" Something like that. But basically, he has his Telecaster, and then he stretches the strings across two tables uses the same pickup the same strings the same bridge and yeah he strums them and yeah what do you know they sound basically the same 
um, again, I remember watching that and wanting to be able to tell the difference because I thought, yeah, I'll be able to tell the difference. The telly will sound a bit fuller or blah, blah, whatever. I couldn't tell any difference. Most people can't, you know, is there a difference? Yeah, probably, but it's negligible. And I think the real kind of nail in the coffin for the importance of it in an electric guitar is like Burl's art. Burl's art, if you haven't seen his videos, fantastic. Makes guitars out, guitar bodies, I should say. I have all sorts of different things. He's done like coloured pencils and styrofoam and coffee beans. And again, he plays them at the end and you're like, yep, that sounds like an electric guitar. Um, there's the video as well where they made a guitar, made a Stratocaster out of cardboard, the whole fucking thing out of cardboard, body and neck. And they take it to Jackson employees and Fender employees to show it off and they all play it and they're literally all just like, yeah, this sounds like a Strat. And that's a guitar made of cardboard. So, you know, and and the other and I think the other thing with Tonewood, especially is there's so many other companies out there that are making guitars from different materials. Um, my bandmate has an Aristides, if that's how you pronounce it. And it's a really cool guitar. And, you know, the, that thing's not made of wood. I think the only thing that's wood on it is the, the fretboard. And yeah, it sounds like an electric guitar when you plug it into an amp. But even acoustically, it sounds good as well. And shameless plug, you can hear it all over this album. <laughs> So, you know, I I love the electric guitar. I still love reading about all of the new pedals, the new pickups, the new gizmos, the new amps. I love all of this sort of stuff. But for me, what I've taken away from looking into Tonewood and looking into all of these things is actually a lot of a lot of the time, you know, you have to take the claims that are presented to you from companies with a grain of salt. Um and just see them for what they are. They're basically products being sold to you by a company for the purpose of making profit. And that's what it is. And I'm not saying that there aren't great um, companies out there making really, really cool equipment and stuff like that. Absolutely not. But I think it's just good practice to kind of like, if you see a really, you know, if something sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. So if you see something and you're immediately reaching for your wallet, stop engage your brain, think, hey, do I actually need this thing? And, you know, for me personally, the answer I come to most days now is, no, I don't. The discussion about Tonewood is is never going to end. And, you know, if you want to buy a guitar made from a specific wood, go for it, man. I love the look. Like I said, bef like I said before, I love the look of all of the different woods. Um, but personally, looking into all of this sort of stuff... Um, my mindset's changed completely and for the most part I'm not looking for new pickups I'm not looking for new secret tone potions and in fact a couple of my guitars I even put back to stock and was pleasantly surprised at how good the inferior components sounded so I'd say yeah just take everything with a pinch of salt engage your brain and hey, maybe just get back to playing the guitar and not overthinking it. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want to hear some guitars that aren't made of wood, you can check out the album Zenith by my band Stormborn. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, um, I'll see ya.